Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dennis Doda. And I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. High cholesterol is known to run in families, and in some cases, high cholesterol is linked to a genetic defect. This is called familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH. FH is a genetic condition that could lead to a heart attack or sudden cardio death at a young age. Mayo Clinic is one of the first hospitals to offer a new genetic test that screens families with children as young as eight for FH, so quite an opportunity to intercede earlier. The testing is done through the new CV Genomics Clinic that is a collaboration between Mayo Clinic Center for Individualized Medicine, uh, the Department of Cardiovascular Diseases, and the Department of Clinical Genomics. Here to discuss genetic testing for FH is Mayo Clinic cardiologist, Dr. Iftikhar Kalu. Welcome to the program, Dr. Kalu. Thank you, Dr. Kakar. So um, it'd be nice if you could tell us a little bit more about what you mean by familial hypercholesterolemia. I know a lot of people know about high cholesterol in general. How is this different? Well, it's a heritable disorder, so it does run in families, and it's due to a faulty gene. And if you have one copy of the gene, then you're likely to get the disease. If you have two, you get a much more severe form of the disease. So it's important because it's one of the most imp important reasons that people get early onset heart attack or stroke. And it's uh, easily treatable, yeah, and if screened, we can start treatment early and prevent these adverse outcomes in these young people. Many people have high cholesterol, right. uh, but not necessarily all of them have FH. Can you tell us how common this is? Well, high cholesterol, if you, we did a study here in Olmsted County, and if you took the population, about 5% of them have high cholesterol, defined as a bad cholesterol greater than 190 milligrams per DL. And of those, actually, only a small percent will have FH. Uh, I would say approximately 5 to 7%. So the rest are due to many different reasons. One reason is they, that they're also genetic, but the genes are multiple genes that have small effects in contrast to FH, where there's a one faulty gene that leads to abnormal cholesterol metabolism. So you mentioned uh, earlier on uh, in younger patients, sudden cardiac death, people would think, for example, arrhythmias would be causing that. But what I'm hearing is that it could be familial hypercholesterolemia in these patients. Indeed. I want you to remember that when, uh, when such tragedy occurs, it is actually quite commonly due to plaque and a heart attack. And in this case, instead of having the typical symptoms of chest pain and somehow getting that warning signal to go to the emergency room and get treated, unfortunately, the heart attack triggers a very sudden abnormal rhythm and the patient dies. And so it can lead to um, sudden cardiac death because of a heart attack. You mentioned the, fam the family connection. Right. But are there others who should be tested? Who should uh, consider being screened for this? Well, there's a lot of talk about where should we do cholesterol screening. So there's one uh, mandate that says we should screen everybody, every child. Um, and then there's another viewpoint which says let's screen those that have a family history of heart disease or family history of high cholesterol. But what everybody agrees on without controversy is that uh, term called cascade screening, where if you have a patient that has FH, then all the family members of that patient should be screened for that mutation, that faulty gene. And this has been shown, for example, in Europe, particularly Netherlands, to be a particularly effective way of detecting these patients early and treating them and preventing bad outcomes. So cascade screening in all the relatives, particularly first-degree relatives. So if, if you identify a person with this condition, certainly that uh, person's children should be screened uh, with the lipid level and also a genetic test. So apart from the, the family history, are there any other warning signs that one should say, well, maybe I should be tested for this? That's a great question. So many of these patients are asymptomatic. That's why it's important to screen them. So you know, when you have very high levels at a young age, you're just walking around with these high levels and you may not have any manifestation. You're just feeling perfectly fine. A minority of individuals might develop bumps in, in the tendons related to their hands or their uh, ankle, uh, but the majority may not have any symptoms. So one clue is that it, was there anybody in your family mm -hmm. that had a heart attack at an early age? That should be a clue. 
looking at some of the research material uh, that uh, you provided to us earlier, right. a frighteningly small percentage of people who have FH have actually been diagnosed with it. Uh, give us some of the statistics. Right. So we estimate there's about a million and a half nearly patients with FH in this country. And uh, unfortunately, only about 10% of them are aware that they have FH oh and my. have been diagnosed. So you can imagine there's a million of uh, people out there who might have this condition, which can cause quite catastrophic event. Sure. And yet they are not aware and uh, are not being treated. So there is a critical need for us in this country to increase people's awareness of this condition with a very simple screening methods. And then the, the beauty is that we can treat these patients with even generic drugs like statin medications that are relatively cheap and can be life-saving. So it's really imperative for us to you know, be more aware of this condition. So if I'm, if I'm sitting out there and I'm worried, I have this family history and I, and I want this test, what is the test? And, and will my insurance company cover this or, or how is that paid for? Sure. So it's actually a series of steps. You see a physician, mm -hmm. and the physician can make a clinical diagnosis without necessarily needing everything. But you know, it's typically a clinic visit, measurement of your cholesterol, and um, but to confirm the diagnosis, a genetic test is helpful. And that genetic test is covered by the vast majority of insurance companies. In the small minority that uh, that are not covered, then there's a reasonable out-of-pocket fee, but more than 90% of the time, the payers will cover this test. And the way we do it is that we uh, seek the help of a genetic counselor who can explain to the patient what the test involves, what it means, what are the implications. I think that's recommended for most genetic tests. And the way Mayo Clinic conducts this test right. seems to be a little bit different than the way it's done elsewhere. Well, it's more the process, I would say. So what happens in other FH clinics is the focus on the patient to treat that patient. What we are focusing on here is, first of all, not only treat that patient, but also recognize that there's a family around that person that we gives us an opportunity to intervene and detect and treat early. So genetic testing is a great way of doing that. And in terms of the treatment, you alluded to earlier medication. Can you make lifestyle changes, for example, improve your diet? Is, is that sufficient? No, that most cases is not sufficient. It is necessary, but it is not sufficient. So we need to have medic medication on top of lifestyle changes. We've been talking about genetic testing to detect familial hypercholesterolemia with Mayo Clinic cardiologist, Dr. Iftikhar Kalu. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Kalu. Thank you very much. Fascinating and, and very helpful suggestions this morning for uh, targeting whether or not you might be at risk for this condition. So we appreciate that, sir.